smile. Hello my beautiful lovelies, hi it's Emmy. welcome back. Today I'm going to be making the clear potato chip. If you've not heard of this, this has been done, so I'm not the first by any means. Corinne did it, Barry did it recently, and many of you requested it, so here I am to test it. It was in my little recipe idea book, and now I've brought it to the surface because today I'm going to make a clear potato chip. If you haven't heard about this potato chip, it's what I just said it was. It's clear. <laughs> A clear or transparent potato chip and it's invented by Hamid Salaman at Diva at the Met in Vancouver. So he shared a recipe in the Vancouver Sun and that's the recipe that I'm going to be basing my recipe off of today. I might make a few tweaks as we go along. The ingredients are pretty straightforward. You're going to use potato starch. I just spilled this everywhere but I found this in the health food section at my grocery store but you can also find it in the Asian market. It makes great karage. If you've never made karage or Japanese fried chicken with potato starch, highly recommend it. I'll put my recipe down below. And then you're going to need some potatoes and you're going to need some salt and olive oil and that's pretty much it. This recipe is a little bit tedious in that it requires a bit of time. So I'm going to do part of it today and then I'm going to do part of it tomorrow after the chips dry. We're going to take eight Yukon Gold potatoes. I'm using ten because mine are pretty small. I'm going to scrub them nice and clean and then we take a sharp knife and cut a one centimeter slice down the middle of this. Don't go all the way through, just a centimeter. And then we're going to toss it with a half a cup of olive oil and a tablespoon of kosher salt. Coat the potatoes really well and then place them onto a baking sheet and we're going to put it into a 450 degree oven for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, we're going to take the potatoes and place them into a bowl and cover them with very hot water. 95 degrees centigrade, about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's just below boiling. Then we're going to let the potatoes sit in the hot water for two hours at room temperature. And then once they cool down, we're going to strain the potatoes out and reserve your stock and place this in the refrigerator and allow it to chill completely. Here's my stock, nice and chilled. Two cups of the stock and four tablespoons of potato starch. Potato starch kind of has the consistency of cornstarch, but when you deep fry with it, it makes such a crispy, crunchy crust. I love it. Look, I have potato starch all over my sleeve. Isn't that great? Oh man. Pardon the potato starch. Oh look, it's on my shirt too. Isn't that great? Ugh. So we want to whisk that in there and incorporate it before we turn on the heat. We're going to bring this to a boil until it forms a clear gel. Oh yes. Quick. Starting to thicken. I'm reducing my heat. Oh my god. Look at this. That is a gel, y'all. That happened fast. So what we're supposed to do is take this beautiful gel we just made and spread it on a parchment lined baking sheet to a thickness of about three millimeters thick and place it in a 135 degree oven and cook it in there for two hours. So my oven only goes to 170 degrees and after watching Corinne's video, it is very easy to burn them. So what I'm going to do is do a little test. I'm going to do the 170 degrees and then kind of keep an eye on it, maybe keep the door jar a little bit. And then I'm also going to use a food dehydrator. This is Ronco Rompo Peels food dehydrator, which I've had forever. I used to dry mushrooms in this when I used to forage for mushrooms when I lived in Montana. And I'm gonna see how well this works. I've just have some parchment on here as well. So we'll do a little side by side comparison. So in the original recipe, it says to just make an even layer and then after it dries to break it into shards. But in other recipes, I've seen people make little chip like shapes, little ovoids. So I think I'm gonna do both of those. Just use a spoon and dollop some on there. It actually says to make them pretty thick, three millimeters. So that's pretty thick. In the original recipe, it says to make one sheet and then to break them into the size of playing cards. So I'm gonna make my chips pretty big. Cause who likes a scrawny chip? I do actually, sometimes scrawny chips are nice. That's kind of sexy, this gel stuff, man. Ow! I'm gonna test the big version too. There's that. Now I'm gonna do the food dehydrator version. Spread it into a layer. So far this is coming out pretty well. I feel like there's not as much stress, say, as something like the jiggly cake. The Japanese jiggly cake, oh my gosh. After seeing so many failures, I was like, ugh, oh, so much pressure. 
So I got three trays of gel and now I'm going to plug this in and let it sit for a couple of hours and see how it goes. What we want them to do is to dry completely nice and firm. We don't want these to burn. I'm imagining that the dehydrator might take a little bit longer than the oven because I think this is going to be at a lower temperature, but I like the fact that I don't have to worry that this will burn at all. So I'm going to let these dry and I'll be back to finish the rest of the recipe. All right, lovelies, I am back and my chips have sufficiently dried. As you can see, there are two different sizes. This came out of the dehydrator and this came out of the oven. So my oven temperature only goes to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. My dehydrator was significantly cooler, it took twice as long. It took about four hours. The dehydrator really didn't shrink all that much, while the ones that were in the conventional oven, they shrunk to about a third of their size. They are much harder and much thicker. The recipe calls for frying these in oil at 350 degrees, but because these are so thin, I think these are just going to scorch. I'm going to avoid any browning, so I'm going to cook it at a lower temperature. I can always increase the temperature. And here is the giant chip that I did in the oven, and I'm going to break this one up as the original recipe calls for. Oil's at 275. Let's use one of the thinner chips and see how that turns out. All right, here we go. Using a little pair of chopsticks here. Oh yeah. Sizzling a little bit and it's turning glassy. Awesome. Ooh, popping a little bit. It's important to make sure you get these as dry as possible because you don't want these to pop too much. Okay, a little bit longer. Don't want these to get too close. It's turning totally clear. Yes. Love that. I'm gonna increase the temperature to 300. This is an induction burner, so I can do that, which is really nice. Okay, I'll take this first chip out. That looks gorgeous. All right, so now I'm gonna try a thicker one. This was the one that was dried out in the oven. Place that one in there. See some tiny bubbles here. Now I'm going to crank this up to 350. So while my oil is coming up to temp, I'm going to use the potatoes that I made the stock with. I don't want these to go to waste. I'm going to attempt to make tater tots. Peeled some of the potatoes. Now I'm going to grate them on a coarse grater here. These potatoes are probably about 90% cooked. They're a little bit hard in the middle. Now I'm going to transfer my grated spuds into there. Garlic powder, black pepper, salt. Just for some added heat, a little bit of cayenne, not too much. Mix this together. And I'm gonna check on the consistency of this. It holds together pretty well. It's probably about a teaspoon of potato, squeezing and kind of rolling into a little cylinder. You know, a tater tot. There's my other tater tot. There we go. You don't wanna overcrowd the pan too much because it'll drop the temperature too much. But I don't have too many tater tots. Tater tots, tater tots. Roll them around a little bit in the oil. Okay, so these are falling apart a little bit. You might want to use some egg in your tater tot mixture because my tater tots are falling apart. That's not good. My tater tots are turning into tater dust. So you should probably put an egg in this, I think. Check this out. I have a few quail eggs left over from my egg recipe. Look at that quail egg. Mix that into there. Mm hmm Oh yeah. Much better. Oh yeah. Here are the tater tots without egg and with egg. So I added one little quail egg to my remaining potato shreds and they came together much better. So now we are ready to taste. My glass potato chips turned out beautifully. I am so excited about these. They look gorgeous, absolutely transparent, clear, peppered with bubbles and salt. Can't wait to taste them. All right, here we go. Itadakimasu. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> they don't really taste that much like a potato chip. The texture is much more brittle and crunchy and kind of shardy and sharp. Although the thinness is very good. I think that cooking them in the dehydrator really lend it to a really nice, thin, crisp potato chip. It's kind of like a kettle cooked potato chip in terms of thickness, but much more harder in terms of a crunch. There is a potato flavor, but it's lacking that really great, intense potato flavor, which I love in a good potato chip. I think I over seasoned these. I don't think I needed to put as much salt as I did <laughs> after they came out of the fryer. I forgot that we seasoned these as well when we made the stock. So yeah gorgeous stunning looking flavor not that great texture all right but stunning presentation just beautiful so here are my leftover potato tater tots and this is batch number one which was made without any binder and as i was frying the poor little things started falling apart i do like this kind of little raggedness that comes with these potatoes because they look a little bit more like tater tots. This batch I added a little quail egg because I only had a little bit of spud left and it was perfect. And these look a little bit more like dumplings, but they held their shape beautifully. And yeah, let's give them a taste. Let me grab some ketchup first. Ketchup, because you gotta have ketchup with your tater tots. All right, do do do, do. Let's try batch number one first without any accompaniment. Mmm, those are actually delicious. Soft and buttery, well cooked in the middle, nice and crunchy on the outside, great potato flavor. Perfect amount of garlic powder in there too. Enough to give it a little bit of complexity but still tastes very potatoey. delicious. I like that a lot. I don't like how it fell apart <laughs> in my frying pan though. So let's try this one that had some egg in it. Mmm. Mm hmm That actually is very good too. Has less of the flaky potato crust on the outside, but held together very well. Kind of like mashed potato in the middle. Great flavor all around. Delicious. I think the perfect recipe would probably be a little bit of a hybrid between these two. It would be a little less egg or more potato, so it would be a little bit more flaky on the outside, and then you've got the perfect tater top. But this was just made with leftover potatoes, so I feel like it's a win-win situation because I didn't let my potatoes go to waste. Oh, I didn't have one with ketchup. Mmm. <laughs> now that tastes like breakfast. That's delicious. Yes, that is definitely worth making. Make yourself some tater tots. I actually am not a huge fan of just regular tater tots, but homemade tater tots? Do it, it's so good. So there you have it, the DIY glass potato chip and leftover potato tater tots, which were absolutely smashing. Be sure to show your love and like this video, share this video with your friends, follow me on social media so you know what videos are coming up next, and I shall see you in my next video. Toodaloo, take care, bye.